and welcome to our class on understanding and trading momentum. One of the best ways to trade in the market and one of the easiest to understand. So what is exactly is momentum trading? Well, momentum trading is a strategy in which you open trades only in the direction of strong price trends, capitalizing on the continuous price action and exiting before the reversal. A momentum trader does not necessarily concern themselves with where a trend ends or begins, but instead the forces on opportunities from the main body of the trend. In this mindset, traders may buy high and sell even higher. Now, I always give this example. Some people think it's stupid, some people think it's funny, and there's two examples, which I'm gonna talk about in class today. But one is the hamster in a cage. When, we, when I was a kid, every kid in my, my class just about had hamsters. And these little hamsters were in these little cages and had these little wheels in the center. And those little hamsters would get on those wheels and they would work so hard to get them going. But then they would start going so fast that it was just amazing that this hamster could keep it moving. I mean, sooner or later, they'd get tired or they need water and it would slow down and slowly end so they could jump off of it. But we're not concerned with that hamster just starting out. We're only concerned with that hamster once he's got that wheel moving pretty f steadily because he can't just jump off of it and he can't just stop it. Okay. My second one is imagine a locomotive. Okay. We all hear sometimes trains need 10 miles to stop. A train moving at 60, 70, 80, 100 miles an hour can't just yank on the brakes. Just physically can't happen. They need to slowly stop that train. There's a point in which that conductor can stop it as fast as he can, but he still can't stop it dead flat because the train's gonna flip off the tracks. So we know when we're watching a trend, when that conductor's putting on the brakes. We know even when he's jacking on it because there's some other thing farther up, but he can't just stop. And this is what momentum trading looks for. We're concerned with when that train is moving up 50, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. We want to be out of it before that conductor's putting the, the brakes on the train, or we want to be out of it before the hamster's trying to slow down the wheel so we can get out and get some water. Either way, we don't want to get in. We're not trying to predict the trend, and we're not trying to predict when it ends. We want to trade even though the price of that asset is high, only because we know that asset's going to continue going up because it just can't stop on a dime. While momentum trading follows short-term trends, it should not be confused with trend trading, which refers to longer-term trades. Trend trading or trend following applies to macro asset classes only and ignores the short-term fundamentals when many traders, momentum traders, watch closely. Momentum trading is only a short-term strategy, and it applies to all markets. Remember the GameStop shorting episode not long ago? Momentum trading is the ability of a market to maintain its price direction, increasing and then decreasing the momentum as the price trend grows, slows, and eventually reverses. Trends in price action can be sparked by fundamental events like earnings reports or world news, or they can be caused by a herd mentality like the GameStop short squeeze of 2021. Momentum trading works if you believe in sustained market trends. A quick glance across a few charts usually reveals that they do indeed exist. Upward price swings can last several days or weeks, and short squeezes can draw on for even a longer period. But we're short-term traders. We're only looking for this little short-term movement. And again, we're not looking to get into the bottom. We're not looking to get out at the top. Now, however, there is no guarantee that trend will continue. Trading momentum leaves you at risk of reversals and price corrections. The strategy requires close attention to trades as once stall prices can cause sell-offs, that can quickly snowball. So again, here's another little story shoot a firework up into the sky. Once we see it, it's not a dud, and you know the, the little wick is fizzled up, and it's shooting out and it's going up. 
we see that movement. We see it's got momentum. Okay. It's already reached the first story moving upward. Okay. This is the point we, which we want to enter. It started to move. Okay. We know at some given point it's going to sh shoot into the sky, but it's going to lose its momentum. If we're using fireworks, we bought the little fireworks store. We don't know how high it's going to go. But we can notice the first little eek in the loss of momentum. Now, wind and everything else can keep it higher going to the seventh floor, the eighth floor, the ninth floor. We don't care. We got in at the first or first and a half. We got out at the eighth. We made our profit. We don't care that it can continue going up because the minute that momentum wanes, we want to be long out of that marketplace. So while momentum trading may seem to favor short-term traders, can also be used as long-term strategies. Position trading is often used to refer to long-term momentum trading, while swing trading is used for short-term momentum. Now, what are the basics? Momentum can be determined over longer periods of weeks or months or within day trading time frames for minutes and hours. The first step traders customarily take is to determine the direction of the trend in which they want to trade. Using one of several momentum indicators is available. Now, again, I didn't say trend line, trend. That A trend can be price movement in three candles. It could be five candles. There is a definitive direction in which the asset is moving. Additionally, there are recommended to use stop losses orders above and below their entry points. Because when that trade is, you know, if you've waited for that momentum to start gathering, you, know, you set your stop loss in case it rains really quickly, because if that fireworks is gonna peter out because it was packed wrong or whatever else, it's gonna peter out pretty quickly. It's got its momentum, we're getting in the market, but just in case it does, we're protected. Momentum is the key concept that has proven valuable for determining the likelihood of profitable trades. Measurements of momentum can be used in the short or long term, making them useful in all styles of trading. Several technical trading tools are available to reveal the strength of trends and whether a trade on a particular asset may be a good bet. Momentum can be used as a measure of volume of a market. If we look at volume on our charts and we see volume continuing up, 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 and up, we should see price moving rapidly also in that. So if momentum reaches extreme highs, the asset is considered overbought. If a momentum reaches extreme lows, that asset is considered oversold. We don't, even though a market that becomes overbought can remain overbought, as a momentum trader, once it reaches overbought, we want to be out of the marketplace. Okay? We're not about entering the market, we want to be out. So how to use momentum indicator for trading? Well, momentum trading is largely based on pure price action and not fundamental elements of price is moving in one direction or another. Thus, it's best to use technical analysis and momentum indicators. MACD is one of the best to use, but we have several other momentum indicators. However, moving averages always lag behind Price action, so momentum trades are best off using MACD to find suitable entry points since they enter after the trade, the trend starts anyways. Okay. And this is it, MACD is a lagging indicator. So the trend is already established. That's what I'm saying. We want an established trend. Now RSI, Relative Strength Index, it measures the strength of the current price movement over its recent period. Stochastics. The stochastic oscillator compares the current price of an asset with its range over a defined period of time. CCI, Commodity Channel Index. This momentum indicator compares the typical price of an asset against its simple moving average. And then, of course, on balance volume. This momentum indicator compares trading volume to price. Now, it's interesting enough, we have a combination of two which can be called a squeeze momentum indicator. The squeeze momentum indicator, otherwise known as TTM squeeze, is a measure of relative volatility. It's a combination of two indicators, Bollinger Bands and Kelter Channels. With the Bollinger Bands is within the Keltner Channel. This represents a period of low volatility. By comparing volatility 
By comparing volatility with the momentum indicator, traders can anticipate sudden volatility in a particular direction. Now, let's talk about strategies for using it. Strategy number one, building and managing a trading account is very necessary, but it requires one to employ the best momentum trading strategy. A momentum indicator technique, according to our staff, can minimize the risk, can also boost your overall profits. This approach was highlighted in our comprehensive guide on the greatest momentum trading strategies we found. Momentum trading is a popular topic in the trading world. According to the efficient market hypothesis, it shouldn't exist. Nevertheless, it impacts and, and, preserve, and it's per, 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 pervasive. And many Wall Street elites have adopted it. They have generated billions upon billions of dollars. So we'll go through its basic concepts. The most important thing is that momentum comes before price. You don't care about the price. You, you only care about momentum. Only once we see momentum building do we care about anything else. If we don't see momentum building, then we don't care about price. The strategy number two is momentum with stochastics and a MACD trading system. Here we can see we're using the slow stochastics and a MACD which we're combining their signals together with price to determine an entry point. So the currency is an uptrend when the histogram is above zero on the MACD. Then we also want to gradually decrease until it reaches zero. We want to reverse and go up again to the, as it approaches zero. We first must identify a turning point on the MACD histogram. This indicates that the blue histogram bars should be above zero before starting to climb. Finally, it should reverse and go up again. After we verified the MACD histograms condition event, we should stat check the stochastics indicators. If it is, should be oversold area around level 20. The two lines should cross each other and the line should be facing up. At least one of the averages ought to be lower than 20. Okay. I know this is a little bit confusing in words, but we have whole classes on MACD and whole classes on stochastics and RSI. But when the histogram crosses the zero line, because the histogram is a combination of the MACD line, the MACD signal line, when they cross each other, they're zero. So when they hit zero and start moving up, they're giving us a buy indication. When the stochastics reaches in the oversold, means it should start moving up also again. But we're not doing anything yet. This is the time to figure out the exact entry point. We must wait for candlesticks that cause this scenario to close before seeing the histogram increase again and the stochastics decline to an oversold zone. This trade should be entered as soon as the candlestick closes. So consider this case. So here you go in this example. We see the candlesticks. They had moved down in this short-term downtrend. We have the MACD line crossing the MACD trigger line, which gives us a zero. And we see the slope here. So for this example, it's vividly clear that the histogram is pointing up and the stochastic lines are crossed on their way up to the oversold level. So one of the oversold zones, the level 20, the histogram is facing up and stochastic lines have crossed each other. We like to bring up some essentials. It occurs when the histogram is above level zero and then falls below zero. That's on the MACD. If this occurs, it must instantly reverse and rise above the level of the next bar to be considered a valid trade setup. The stop loss is set one pip below the base candle, which is the candlestick in which all the conditions have been met. So here you see where we put our stop loss. All the conditions met, we put our stop loss, our target point, our second target, and we would enter at the close of this candle. We'll conclude that the trade in two stages. We'll first close at 80% of the trade, and then we'll close the second. But that depends on your closing strategy. This is mine. I always close half when I've made good profit, and then leave the others 
to ride a little bit longer with a much closer stop loss. So it's very easy to see the price movement when we see it on our charts and we can see the candlesticks. We can see where we place our stop loss. We would see our entry point. We see our, our, um, our indicator breaking the 50 line. So we have everything in place. So what is momentum trading all about? As a new trader, one of the first lessons I learned was that the only way to profit is to pick stocks which are moving. The good news is that there is a stock that moves 20 to 30% and more practically every day. That's a proven fact. So what we want to do is look for assets that are very active. Okay. And once we found these, we want to look at their technical characteristics. Before we proceed any farther, let's take a step back and consider that we need from what we need from a momentum day trading strategy. First and foremost, we require a moving stock or a moving asset, a moving currency, a moving commodity. Stocks that are trading sideways for us are meaningless. A trader's initial step is to identify the assets that are moving. To identify these, I just use a scanner. I only trade extremes in, in the market. This suggests I'm looking for an asset that has a once a year event. Almost always the price action linked with this occurrence is the cleanest. So what's the most profitable trading strategy? Well, all three of these strategies outlined share some common characteristics that make them one of the top choices for generating consistent profits. In my analysis, I came across the following important areas for weighing a selection. They are not focused solely on the strength or weakness of the trend. The strategies try to help us capitalize on the strength of the price action change rather than following the trend blindly. For instance, the Williams percent R strategy informs you to check the length of the candlesticks to gauge the robustness of the momentum behind the change. Applicable in the wide range of markets, you can apply strategy in one and strategy two for a wide range of markets, including cryptocurrency and forex pairs. The third forex momentum trading strategy is especially adapted to trading stocks and it takes advantage of one-time events. Simplicity and application everywhere. You don't need an advanced trading interface to apply the following strategies. The most profitable strategies in 2021 needs to be simple and enough. Okay. And in 2022, oh, we got a crazy world out there with inflation and possibly recession. But again, we want to stick to basics. We always want to put our stop loss in. Stop loss is a strategy that should allow us to capitalize on price movements with a, with a rather robust move, but also protect us from loss. But before implementing a strategy with real money, it's always essential to test out on a demo account. There's always room to tweak and fine tune the strategy. No matter how long you're trading, no matter how big your account is, every broker offers you a demo that goes along with your live trade. And this demo account they offer you is developed for you to practice and adjust your strategies before you jump into the real markets. But never trade without risk management. Never take a trade without applying risk management strategies to your decision. Always have exit indicators. Always have a strategy before you implement a trade. Where or how are you going to determine if the momentum is waning and where are you going to get out of the market? Because you'll find you'll eventually then stay in the market too long and you'll lose your profits. So what do we want to do? We want to define a trend or a momentum movement. We want to look for bold candles. We want to look for at the momentum indicators to give us overbought and oversold zones or MAC, MACD to be crossing the zero line. We want to make sure we place our protective stop losses and to take our, put in our take profit points and then execute our trade. So momentum is a key concept that has proven valuable for determining the likelihood of a profitable trade. Measurements of momentum can be used in the short or long term, making them useful in all types of trading strategies. Remember, we don't care that stock X, Y, and Z is really worth $42 
and it's trading at 39. We also don't care if X, Y, and Z is at $42 and only is worth 45. We don't care. We only care where the momentum is driving it at the moment. So traders should be forewarned that momentum projections are customary calculated using measurement of past price trends. Actual momentum and price can change at any moment based on events that weren't factored into the original calculations. Because of this, it's important to take preventative measures such as setting stop losses to safeguard against any unforeseen price reversals in even the most probable momentum scenarios. Now back to my old stories. Since human beings make up the markets, price is completely, completely random. Absolutely. But there are times when price exhibits non-random behavior. And this is when price is trending. And when price has trends and momentum, we can then make high probability calculations to enter a trade at a good point and to exit at a good point. We don't want to get at the bottom. We don't want to get out of the top. We don't want to be greedy. And we don't want to be emotional. So that's it for today, folks. Thank you very much for joining us. And if you don't understand MACD Stochastics RSA, I have whole one-hour classes on them. And we'll explain them to you step-by-step step along the way. So thank you once again. Bye now.